Okay, well, it's November the 25th, 2024. This is the schematic. I draw it in uh, LT Spice. I've learned uh, how to use LT Spice pretty well. It's not correct enough to actually simulate, and that's not a problem. Um, LT Spice is not necessarily a, um, it's not a drafting program, it's a simulation program. So I can't draw everything uh, exactly, you know, just by drafting. But anyway, this is close enough. This is, this is accurate. I've, I've gone over it a few times, okay? Start out here with the uh, RCA input connector. That one made by, uh, <laughs> I never got the name of it again. I'll think of it in a minute. This is a 100K uh, audio taper pot. It, lo, audio tapers are also known as logarithmic pots. Um, it's actually a Radio Shack one. I didn't have any of those uh, Allen Bradley uh, uh, audio taper ones that I could find. That's that red capacitor there, there that 0.1, 470K off the ground, good resistor. 150 ohm uh, cathode resistor, not bypassed. Well, you you wouldn't bypass it because we're using it for negative feedback. If we put a capacitor around it, then the signal coming back for the negative feedback would just be shunted to ground. So we can't really bypass that one. <clears throat> the load resistor is 75K. The way that I determined these component values, one, two, three, and four, sometime back on my 300B is I put pots in it, potentiometers. I wired them in and I dialed them in until I made sure that the signal right here was good coming out of this one, that it was very good coming out of this one by varying these uh, resistors. I mean, even from a kid, I had the idea of having an amplifier that uh, everything in it was adjustable, you know, so I could tweak it exactly where I wanted it. Well, that's kind of what I did. So, in my opinion, from my experience, from empirical design, which means by experimentation, this circuit right here, this driver circuit all the way up to the um, 807, these are optimized values for this 6SN7 at about 400 volts here. It could be a little higher, a little lower. It could be 450. It's not that critical. But for voltages in this range. It's actually 375 right here. Well, actually, it's right here. Or right here, or whatever. 375. Yes, right here. N not here, because it's got that dropping resistor there. These are optimized values. They'll give you a very nice, clean um, sine wave right here at the grid of the 807. This one is bypassed, as you can see, with a 10 microfarad, 22 cap. I use two watt ones. I suggest two watts. I think I use two watts for these... Um, uh, these load resistors, half watts are fine for, for these grid resistors. That should be a two watt. The reason I know that is because um, I've put like half watts or one watts in there and over a period of a, a year or two or so, uh, they'll turn brown. They're, they're, they're dissipating a watt or so of uh, power and they run a little bit hot. This is another vintage capacitor right here, the 0.25 and a 330K. Now the 500 ohm one is the one that set the uh, idling current, the quiescent current of the 807 to 60 milliamps. I like to run them kind of hot, but as you can, if you remember from the uh, uh, from the temperature measurements, so I made only it was only like 250 degrees, so it's actually very cool. This idea right here, this 100 watt resistor from the screen directly to the plate, not down here to the B plus, but to the plate, is uh, a design uh, detail I got from. Uh, other amplifiers, especially the ones made by uh, UTC, United Transformer Company. Oh, they make beautiful transformers. I think everybody knows that. Especially something like that LS57. And they make some very, very nice designs. And I've built uh, a couple of these for my friend that's uh, now in uh, in Florida with uh, push parallel push-pull 6L6. It just did a marvelous job. Absolutely amazing with a big uh, UTC transformer out here. Um, there's, a, there's a video on it. Uh, there are no um, models for rectifiers for like a 5U4 in, um, in the Corin 
library. The Corin library is a library of parts. You only got a triode, a, a tetrode, and a pentode. So anyway, I just drew in a couple of rectifiers and said it's a 5v4. And I didn't draw in the switch and the and the uh, fuse and the neon bulb across it. But I mean, that's what you what you want to do, you know. This little power transformer, uh, you can look this up. Here it is. It's a Hammond W022772. It's right there on the internet. It tells you everything about it. It's 100 milliamps. Uh, the, the secondary one. It's got a 5 volt and a 6 volt winding too. And I, of course, I didn't draw in the filaments either. That just makes it so complicated. You don't do. Nobody does that. They might draw it down here as a as, as a sub uh, uh, example, but I didn't see the purpose of that. You know, you got to wire up the filaments and everything. I grounded the center tap on a six volt winding. Um, used a uh, ten Henry hundred milliamp, one hundred fifty microfarad, four hundred fifty volt each side. These are the larger resistor, they're 10 watts. They, there's only a couple of watts being dissipated in them, so they run pretty cool. You don't have to have a 10 watt, and you don't have to have a 10 watt, but a 5 would be uh, just fine. I do use uh, 3 dB of uh, global feedback from here back to the cathode. When I first wired it up, the, the, uh, the wires on the secondary, one is black and one is green. I didn't know which was which, so it didn't really matter. I wired the black to ground and the green uh, to the hot but then that gave me positive feedback so I just reversed the two if you if you're running feedback and you get and you put your feedback resistor and everything goes kapooey on you because the lower you make this resistor in value the more feedback you get but if you're lowering it and the output is going up then that's called positive feedback and you can either swap this wire and this wire or you can swap this wire and this wire. Can't, don't swap both of them. If you swap both of them, then you're right back where you started from. But you can swap either one. I swapped the output. That's just a detail that I had to work out. Uh, there's the transformer. Uh, the the model, make model and everything of it. 5K to 8K, 10 watt. Made by this good gentleman here. His name is uh, Marco. I have labeled it 807 single ended audio on fire as built. This is an a as built. These are the actual component values in it. Like I say, missing the detail of the 5 volt and the 6 volt and the on off switch and all that kind of stuff. And I didn't have a method to draw an RCA connector out there. And here's what really absolutely just amazes me because I, I watched the video again very carefully. It is 0.7 dB flat. From 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz at 1.7 watts. That's what's documented in the video. I'm running it at it 2 watts now. I just did signal to noise ratio. It's it's uh, minus 75 dB. That's not the perfect minus 90, but anything that's 75 to 80 dB is you will never hear any noise on your speaker. Even those big clip horns I have, which is probably about the most efficient speakers I think anybody makes, you don't hear a thing. They're very, very quiet. I was, I've been playing all, not all night, but the last couple of hours with signal to noise ratio. I, <laughs> I figured out my uh, HP 8903. Uh, well, I guess I was tired the other night when I was trying to figure out how to make it do signal to noise ratio. It's actually, everything's simple when you know, huh? But this is the schematic. I'm not going to take it any further than this and get into a bunch of weird stuff and start showing you this and that. I would love to show you a bunch of other stuff, just, just even how critical the quality of connecting cables is when measuring things like signal-to-noise ratio. You've got to have a very, very quiet environment to measure minus 90 dB. Uh, this Macintosh that's sitting right next to it, which is not in camera view, it's right over here to the right of the, the schematic, <clears throat> they uh, say it's minus 90 and uh, I cranked it up to 40 watts and I can measure it at minus 85 point something so I, it's probably minus 90 it's probably meets their specs and uh, so I have probably about 5 dB in noise but just the connecting cables that go uh, to the input uh, of the amplifier and then from uh, the output over to the equipment oh it is just absolutely so critical it just makes me shake my head 
at some of these junk cables I've bought off the internet. You can make very good cables out of RG58 cable. RG58 is real coax and all of the RG58 cable I have works just as well as these high dollar uh, HP cables. They're modeling of 10503A. 10503A. If you can get them for a, a, a reasonable price, they're, they're the best. They're excellent. But uh, cables made properly with good BNC crimps or RCA and connectors on the end work just as well. And uh, quite a bit cheaper if you use a good quality RG8. I don't mean RG8. RG58. I hope I said that the first time. RG58, the small stuff. Really genuine, you know, USA made Belden uh, coax, like ham radio operators use, etc. Well, this is all I want to say about that. Uh, this is the schematic. I, I, I've been, I've had it on all day. There's just nothing wrong with it. I, um, I'm, I'm still as stunned now as, as I was last night because it's just absolutely fabulous. I'm, I never expected it. I think the angels were with me on this one. I really mean that. Well, thank you, gentlemen, ladies, gentlemen, any, all of you out there that uh, helped me with this, and I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. It was a marathon, but um, I got a dandy little SCT amplifier with an 807 that I uh, would have never dreamt would have been this good. Stay safe. That's all I got to say for this one right now. Hope to be making some more in the future, and I'll show you about some. I'll make I'll make some soon about the uh, signal to noise ratio, and show you just how important the cables are, and how you can if you've got the right kind of equipment where you can test your cables for noise. Stay safe.